Uh, don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. I'm getting an error message on two of my, uh, on your streams. Yeah. Two of my streams. I got my main profile and I got YouTube, but my flip empire one, let me just see really quick. Why is he doing that? Oh, hold on. I'm getting a, I'm getting an error message. Damn. Let me see something here. I'm going to leave really quick the studio and I'm going to hop right back in. Okay. No problem. All right. If it knocks you out, just get right back in. I will come back. Hey, I am okay. here. All right, beautiful. Let me hit. Uh, I think we are live. So I hopped off, and you were on. Hopefully, you were not picking your nose or something, because who, uh, whoever's on the six people that are on maybe saw you picking your nose, dude. I never do that. What are you talking? You're insinuating that I do that and you caught me before. I'd be really fine offensive. I should leave right now. You okay. know you won't do that to me, man. You know you will not do that. Yeah, so guys, if uh, unfortunately, uh, Chico, for whatever reason, I'm getting an error message on Flip Empire's Facebook group and uh, the Smart Wholesalers, uh, South Florida Smart Wholesalers. So uh, are you are you doing this on Instagram too as well? No, no, that this, this platform doesn't connect to Instagram, just oh, YouTube, okay. Facebook, and LinkedIn. So, um, all right, guys, well, we are live. We're live. Chico, the, the shenanigans that are about to ensue. <laughs> so I can only, for, for yeah. those of you that are on right now, let me apologize in advance for may, what may come out of this man's mouth. But uh, him and I have been friends for a very, very long time, and it, it, it's bound to get, who knows? Who knows, yeah, right? Friendship started when you came to my house and you brought me cash. Uh, typically, is, anyone that does that, it's always you're always starting off on the right foot. This is very true. So many, many years ago, 2010, yeah. 11, I showed up to his house at night with yeah. what was it, a thousand bucks in cash? Five hundred? I don't even remember. Yeah, that was a thousand, fifteen hundred. I think it was, a, think it was yeah. a thousand bucks. Yeah. So that, yeah. that that was the start of our friendship, and and basically, you bought me now. So. Yeah, That's I know. Great. I know. You bought my friendship. My friendship <laughs> is for sale. Always. All right. Uh, my friends, do me a favor. Give me a quick comment here. Let us know that you can hear us. Uh, I don't want to assume technology is working in our favor. I just had a little hiccup here with uh, some of the Facebook groups, but I want to make sure that you guys uh, are able to hear us. We're going to be covering national wholesaling, the difference between virtual wholesaling and national wholesaling. And this guy, Mr. Chico here might know a thing or two about that. So uh, what we're going to do is we're planning on going roughly about 45 minutes of content. Chico's got a lot to share with us. And then we're going to be, uh, we're going to be opening it up for Q and a. So do me a favor, guys. Um, I've been doing these every day since Monday. What I'd like you to do if possible is any question you guys have, put it in the chat box now so that that way Chico and I can kind of go from, you know, reverse order, the, the earliest comment. It looks like D Garcia, the two OGs of South Florida real estate. Uh, I seen you. That. It's been a while, D. Yeah, uh, D, D, D's a cool, cool person. Thank you, D. Uh, all good. All right, Chico. Dude, for better or worse, they can hear us. Kia Charles. Uh, hey, man. They, they don't even know what they're in for here, dude. Yeah. I don't, you know, I I have no idea. I have no idea. All we're going to do is uh, we're going to just chat away. And uh, am I allowed? Am I allowed to swear just in case it comes out? Yes. Down? Yeah. Oh. Hey, dude, there, there, there are no filters here. I want you to be Chico. Let me take that back. I want you to be 90% of Chico. Some of the things you box yeah. me, yeah. some of the things you box me cannot be shared on here. That's so right. that's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Well, I appreciate I appreciate you having me on. As always, I strive to be the most frequent guest on your podcast or any of your shows. And and that's really all that I live for. So I'm happy to be here and happy to continue to push the envelope and set the bar for everybody else. Yes. Okay. Yeah. By the way, this is this is a record. I don't think this is this might be your fifth time on the Flip Empire show. And guys, just to set the, set the stage of how close Chico and I are, our families hang out on a, on a fairly frequent basis, considering he's in a county north of me. But Chico, my very first expert interview class on the Flip Empire show, going back almost four years. Yeah. So uh, got a lot of love and uh, appreciation for this man right here, uh, despite all his. Uh, and now, and now, and now I send you leads. 
<laughs> yes, yes. And and now now we partner on some campaigns together. He sends me leads and he expects me to just shower him with hundreds of, of dollars. So you put, you put a deal on the contract yesterday, you uh, yes. uh, uh, in the middle of the coronavirus. <laughs> that's right. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. So um awesome, brother. So let me know if you can share your screen or if you want to hop right into it. Yeah, so you know, just that um you some of you guys may heard uh, me speak about before. Uh, in terms of, I'm going to give a, a, like a, a two minute overview. So most of you, some of you guys know me, some of you don't. Um, I, um, I started real estate investing back in 2003 ish or something like that. And back around 2005, I started to do virtual wholesaling. So I was the one, you know, back then, no, you know, there was no Google street view. There was a, there was a lot of things that you guys have right now that make things so much easier. Yes. Okay. Then, than what I had available to me way back when. And so I started virtual wholesaling back around there, 2005, 2006. And, uh, and that's kind of like, I consider the godfather of that. And, and most of the deals, uh, I mean, all the marketing I was doing was direct mail. And I was doing direct mail for a very long time. And then there was a, a bunch of iterations of direct mail and different postcards, postcards that were a little bit too aggressive. Uh, Pardo had mailed some of them where, uh, you know, I would say that a good, a good, uh, a good mark of a postcards aggressiveness is, is if the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the local news tries to show up at your house and tries to figure out who you yeah. are. Okay. That's a long, that's a long right. story, yeah. but go ahead. Yeah. You know, I was kid. I said, you know, that there's one person I never want to show up to my house unexpectedly. And that is 60 minutes because if they show up without an invitation, we got problems. <laughs> And, and by the way, the fact, knowing you, the fact that that has yet to happen to you is right. Hard. Yes, that's right. And then uh, what ended up happening is that, you know, back um, a couple of years back, you know, started to get more competitive in, 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 uh, in terms of generating leads. You know, just, you know, back when I started with direct mail, it was hard to do a lot of the things we, we do right now. We take for granted. It was hard to get a list. It was hard to get a postcard done where like the owner's property address would show up on the postcard and their information. I mean, it was really difficult. Now that's commonplace. Now you don't even need a guy like me. You can just go to mailing house and they'll do everything for you. So as that become more that as that became more and more popular and easier to do, then obviously there was a lot of other people coming into the uh, real estate market as wholesalers. And so that got crowded. <clears throat> and so I started to look for other avenues. And you know, for me, um, in terms of other avenues, was I realized that hey, I needed to I needed to get online. I had looked at PPC, but PPC had been around for a while, and the cost per lead was high. And then you know, SEO, uh, it, where where you try to get your sites ranked for Google, and then try you know to get free traffic. And that was you know that was, that's more of a long term play. It takes a lot of time, energy, and effort to do that. And so I settled on Facebook and I started uh, working on Facebook and I started to uh, to try to figure out that platform and through a lot of trial and error and also taking some of the things that I found from direct mail, brought it into Facebook. And then I was able to get that channel to work. And now I have uh, and I think we have a group of 1500 students that I've held so far with Facebook ads. And <laughs> what happened with Facebook is that in the beginning, when I was uh, trying to make Facebook work, I implemented uh, what was working with direct mail and with direct mail, what worked is that we personalized the postcard and we were really targeted around the zip code. And so I had the idea of, Hey, let's do that on Facebook. And so I was running ads specific to the zip code and the ad said the zip code and you know, that worked great. But then, uh, about a year and a half ago, actually not, uh, maybe it was last summer, uh, well before that, but finally around last summer, Facebook instituted some changes, brought some changes about that completely eliminated uh completely eliminated the zip code targeting so you couldn't target by zip code anymore right and so then we were trying to figure out all kinds of ways of targeting and then it ended up being that by just by luck i created a, a facebook campaign to find motivated sellers and i forgot to put the targeting on that campaign and lo and behold before you know it i had so many leads coming and i was like oh my god this is so good and then i realized that the leads were coming from ohio and were coming from this place and that place but then that got my juices thinking. And so I started to test and, and try to uh, figure a few other things out. <laughs> and we realized, and that's what we're going to discuss today. Oh, I got to turn off my, uh, I didn't do that. Oh, yeah. man. Well, what? This isn't an amateur show, dude. You got to turn off your phone, yeah. bro. <laughs> so, so I started, so, so, so through that accident, I realized, and through really working through Facebook, I realized that uh, Facebook right now really uh, loves you to have a larger audience. 
And what I figured out and what I'm recommending to my students and what my students are doing now is that rather than focusing, and that's what we're going to talk about here today, is rather than just focusing in a very small area that we we expand this the area that we that, that we market in, we're going to get more leads and then we're just going to operate virtually and it's going to give us better opportunities. It's going to give us opportunities to, to be able to do deals and markets you may, may have never thought about. The cost per lead, and I'll show you some examples mm -hmm. I'll break it down for you. And that's really what I'm going to cover here today because <laughs> that's that's it's 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 looking at virtual wholesaling in a different way. And um and I, I actually put together I put together this is not this is not a uh, I put together some slides because there's some things that I really would want to show you guys. Now this is not a like a webinar presentation where I'm gonna go through some long drawn out picture or anything like that. It's just that visually there's some things that will really be helpful for me as I'm explaining them to you guys and also for you guys to be able to see. And so I think okay. with the magic of technology, you're somehow are going to do I have to hit that share button share screen button? I, I think share will probably work, but hold on, hold on. Ready? <laughs> let's see. Come on, let's you're see. making me look bad, bro. Come on. Let's see. Uh uh, hold on. You're supposed to be the techie one. Yeah, I know. I know. Let me see. <laughs> Application window. All right. You should be able to see my PowerPoint presentation. Uh, let me add it to the stream. Boom. There we go. Hold All on. Right. Hold on. Let, let me do this again so people actually think I know what I'm doing. Hold on. There, there you go. go. Look at that. There okay. Go. okay. So then now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to expand this so it takes up my whole screen, but then you got to let me know if that, if that, now you yep. should be able to see only that screen. Is that right? Yeah. Yep, you're right. good to go. It says national wholesaling versus traditional virtual wholesaling. Yeah, and, and I think we talked about this before we got on the call. As I'm going through this, because this is, you know, this is me. I put this together this morning just for us. So this is not like a presentation that I've done millions of times over or anything like that. So maybe as, as questions come in or maybe you have questions or want to enter, uh, enter uh, uh, you know, interject, then just let me know. Okay. Um, All right. Sounds good. So let's talk about like, so this is what, what most real estate investors do is they pick, you pick a market. That's always everybody's thing. Hey, I'm going to go out and pick a market. So you're either going to pick, which by the way, as I'm talking to you and you see my slide, are you also seeing my face? Yeah, I can okay, see it. I'm just asking that way I don't do anything that I shouldn't do while I'm, I'm on camera. <laughs> you know what I should have done? I, I should have messed with you and I should have said, dude, we can't see you at all. I can only see your screen. And then God knows what you would have been doing, right? So if I took off my shirt and I started to rub myself, no, or like that, would you would you stop me at least? What I'll do is I'll just I'll, hit, I'll click a button. It'll remove you from the stream, and then I'll have to take over. Right. Okay. Okay. So um, so what most people do is that if they they're gonna start you know being a wholesaler, then you're gonna make a choice. You're gonna say either I'm gonna go I'm gonna do local or I'm gonna do virtual. But regardless of the choices that you make. You know, you're in, you're in essence going to pick one market. And then what you're going to do is you're going to attempt to implement different various strategies in that one market, right? So now the problem with this approach is that let's say that if you're going to a virtual market, you're going to research a market, the research on the market that you make, it's either going to be minimal or um, you're, 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 you don't really know the data that you're looking at. And in the end, what I find is that most people, you're just going to go in and just pick a market like as if you were throwing a dart on the wall and then you're just going to go with it. You're going to do some marketing. You're going to test it out, test the waters, and you're going to see what you get and then try to then figure out and, and try to adapt from there. And, you know, the, the issue with that is that you're going to end up spending a lot of time, energy and money it, it, to, to guess, to guess what really is going to work or not. And so, again, like if I were to go and I did this this morning, I said, OK, if I was going to research a market, what would I look at? And I, I started to like pull out these different graphs that I got from various places. And in the end, I'm not an economist. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I so the, I can't make any sense of this other than to say, okay, well, I'm just going to have to take a guess and pick something. Right. Um, and so again, if we're going to do that, if you pick a market, then generally this is what you do. You're going to, you're going to pick a variety of different strategies and these are in no particular order. Right. But you might say, you know, let's say I'm going into Dallas. I say, I'm going to go into Dallas, Texas. And I'm going to go and maybe do some direct mail, do some cold calling, do some text blasting, do some RVMs, which is ringless voicemails. Mm -hmm. if, you know, if, if you if you're local to the area, you might do driving for dollars. So you're going to go kind of a vertical approach and try to figure out, hey, let's do some marketing, see what works. So with the what we're doing now is that we're not picking one market. What we're doing is we're selecting a marketing channel and then and then allowing that marketing channel 
to dictate where the leads come. And at that point, then now uh, we're going to work the leads and the deals wherever they may be. So it's kind of like the reverse. So rather, again, rather than picking one mm -hmm. market and a bunch of marketing strategies, we're going to pick one marketing strategy, and that's going to allow allow leads to come in from various markets, right? Really smart. My, and by the way, you stumbled on this by mistake, you said, right? Yeah, because I forgot to put the targeting on Facebook <laughs> for the leads. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm a genius. I got all these leads coming from anywhere. Um, and, and that wasn't the case. But through that, you know, it, it, the best discoveries come by accident. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly right. That's awesome. All right. So then now... I'm going to walk you through the framework of, of how this works and everything else. So let's say, and, and, and much of it depends on, on you and where you're at in your business. So if you are a beginner, just starting out brand new, then you would just select one state. You would select uh, the state perhaps that you live in. Like for me, it would be Florida. If you are intermediate, then you might select two or three states and you might put them together. Now, the only reason that is intermediate is because of the fact that you know every state has different nuances of doing business. The title mm -hmm. companies work differently, the, the laws and, and the idiosyncrasies of these markets. And so then if you're doing two or three markets together, then you just have a, a, another layer of complexity that if you were a beginning real estate investor, then you, you want to try to avoid that. And then advance would be selecting the entire country. Now, you wouldn't necessarily select the entire country because then you're going to get like, you know, these areas in the middle of the country that hardly have any population. Uh, mm -hmm. But in general, you've got about 12 or so states that are the most populous, you know, states such as Florida, you know, Pennsylvania, the Texas, and, and all those different states that you're going to pull all of them together and you're going to you're going to just target 11 or, or, you know, 11 or 12 of them together. But again, this is the order upon which I do them. Now, <laughs> I do recommend staying away from certain markets. Like, for example, you know, if you're in California, California is an example of a market that's a more difficult market to work in. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't do deals in California, but you're going to need a larger budget. Sure. You're gonna, exactly. You know, um, uh, California is an interesting market because, you know, you could be in one neighborhood and then four blocks down, the neighborhood changes and the pricing changes. And so there's mm -hmm. a lot of nuances with California. Uh, another example of a bad market would be New York. If you're in New York, um, then, you know, New York, like Brooklyn County, uh, Queens County, all those, you know, those areas are difficult. Why? Because uh, every time, uh, and this is something I found by accident in that we were doing some marketing in New York. And then I, I, every single time we had a negotiation with a seller and we agreed on price, the sellers uh, said, okay, let me get my attorney involved. And then I was like, why is it that all these sellers want their attorneys involved? And it's just the way they do business. But whenever there's an attorney involved, yeah. they want your contract, they want a bigger deposit. And so it's, it's a fairly difficult market. So you want to try to stay away from those. Are, Chico, now, are you talking, I would imagine that's the case in New York City and Manhattan, but are, did you find that for the entire state of New York? Well, uh, the, 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 I, the counties that I, I specifically uh, was trying to do deals in that I then backed out were okay. Brooklyn County and Queens County. Got it. Um, so I think that as you get further and further away from, you know, from the, the metro, then it, it, it loosens up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that was my experience. OK, OK. Makes sense. <laughs> so then yeah, now I, I know that the new, the Californias of the world, New York, even, uh, you know, Chicago. I know those are very difficult markets. Right. So. Correct. And Chicago, you brought up a good point. <laughs> Certain markets. Chicago, um, uh, Illinois, you need a, a, a real estate license out of wholesale. So if you don't have a real estate license, then it may not be a good idea for you to start there. <clears throat> Other markets like Ohio, uh, Utah, um, Oklahoma, they're very strict about wholesaling. And by that meaning that you don't necessarily, it's okay for you to wholesaling there, but you really got to have your I's dotted and your T's crossed. Like for example, mm -hmm. as a wholesaler, you're not really selling the property because if you were to selling the property, then you're selling the property on behalf of somebody else and you don't own the property. So you're now you're acting as a real estate agent. Technically we're selling the agreement. We're selling our contract over to the buyers. So if you're advertising, if you're doing deals in Utah, if you're ever in, um, in Ohio or Oklahoma, <clears throat> then you really have to be very careful about how you advertise your deals. And so, right. you know, those are, <clears throat> those are markets that are the more difficult ones, but, you know, there's so many other markets that are very robust. Um, and even in Florida, I'm in Florida. And it, when I look at my, um, when I target people on, in, in, uh, in Facebook on Florida, there's 12 million people to target. So it, it's not as if it's a very, you know, a hundred of us could be in Florida advertising and we wouldn't mm -hmm. butt heads into, into each other. So I'm going to give you, share with you some examples 
So because the, 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 the thing that comes up in mind is that, OK, if you're advertising the state, you know, I'm in I'm in Florida. So if I'm advertising all the state of Florida, you know, I'm, I, aren't I going to get leads in all these small little towns that are just not going to I'm not going to be able to do anything with. Right. <clears throat> and so here's an example. And this is just a student. He did a deal in this in this place called Johnstown, Pennsylvania. And uh, the population size was 19,000 people. So that's a fairly small population size. So he did that yeah. deal there. And then um, <clears throat> this one was another one he had done in White Wright, Texas. I don't know about you, but it had, White Wright, Texas, whenever we make our list of vacation spots every year. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that makes it. <laughs> yeah, we, we think such as, you know, uh, France and, you know, Europe and, and, uh, and, and you know, Bora, Bora. Uh, all these places. But White yeah. Wright, Texas never makes it. Um, Not quite. Yeah. Oh, how about Withy, Wisconsin? I've never heard of any of these cities, but I, I guess that's yeah. the point. Yeah. So, so in other words, these small towns, they're still viable leads. Now, here's the thing: like you would not, you would not go after these small towns specifically. Right? Why? Like if if you're going through the conventional method, you wouldn't because they're too small. You wouldn't be able to do any any sort of volume. You get a deal every so often, but you wouldn't want to use that. You wouldn't want to establish your base for wholesaling in those towns. However, when you're doing it with my approach, you're able to do deals in towns like this because they just come to you, all right? Does that make sense? It does, yeah. All right, so then now, here's the deal. So the question is, how do you target the whole state? Well, the, 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 you can't do that if you're doing direct mail, right? Because what are you gonna do? You're gonna direct mail the entire state? You just can't do that. You're gonna, you know, if you're doing cold calling, are you gonna cold call the entire state? You, you wouldn't be able to do that, it's, it's, yeah. especially for either your brand new or even if you had a lot of money, that would be very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. so, so this strategy here really lends itself only to any sort of online marketing, all right? And to, for me, I think Facebook is the easiest platform to learn. And I also believe, <laughs> I'll say this, I believe that everybody here on this call should always stri should strive to do three things, right? If you, and I look at this from the perspective, if you want to flourish in this economy and in future, you know, 10, 20 years from, you know, whatever the timetable is, you need, I, I'm a firm believer is you need to do three things. Number one is you need to be able to learn how to do real estate uh, that is a property other than your principal residence, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody can go buy a house to live in, but how to go out and source a below market deal and be able to buy it and be able to profit from it. Whether you do 10 of those a year, 20 of those, whether you do only one or two every so often, but at the end of the day, I think that's a valuable skill. And everybody here listening to us is there. Number two is I think that everybody should learn how to sell. Now, selling is like it could be selling in print. It could be selling in face in person, face to face if you're with a seller. But, you know, selling big picture is the ability to communicate your point of view to somebody else to get to the try to get them to, to 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 move forward with you in some way, whether it be buying something or whatever. And then the last thing is I think everybody should learn online advertising because it's not gonna go away. Once you learn one platform, then you're learning the language of online advertising. If you learn how to fill out a contract for wholesaling real estate, and you learn the nuances of a contract, if you're gonna do another strategy in real estate, if you're gonna do subject to, if you're gonna do creative financing, if you're gonna buy an apartment building, yes, those strategies are different, but now you can take that core knowledge that you've obtained about contracts and law and how to fill out the paperwork and everything else, and now you take it to that next strategy and that strategy is a little bit easier to deal with, right? Because you already have the foundation. So that's what I'm saying here is that I'm, I'm a firm believer in online marketing and advertising. I'm a firm believer in that Facebook is the easiest platform. And to me, I think everybody should learn online advertising. And so mm -hmm. then the, the question becomes is how does Facebook know all this information about you? People get finicky about this. Like, oh man, Facebook knows so much. And either I would say you can either get pissed off about that, or you can look at it and say, I'm going to take advantage of it because here's a list of uh, some stuff that I copied from the internet. Um, they know everything. They know so much about you. All right. And and that is because they, every single website that you visit, if you go right now and you visit, you know, a restaurant, um, that restaurant has a their Facebook pixel installed there and they know that you've been there. Facebook knows that you've been there. And all of a sudden now they know that you're looking for a restaurant and then they might serve, serve you an ad. Um, and so how Facebook, the way that we just, and I'm walking through the strategy of how specifically we advertise on Facebook, our targeting, what the numbers look like. And I'm also, also, uh, also going to give you some tips on 
uh, virtual wholesaling. So in other words, you're going to go ahead and you're going to generate these leads are going to be in, in different areas of town and how to get past the, the biggest obstacles. And the biggest obstacles I find are uh, how to how to take how to get photos of properties and how to deal with the showing and the selling of these properties when you're a thousand miles away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so in essence, big picture, and we'll cover these, how Facebook work is just we create these image ads. We create these ads that encompass text and image. Facebook shows these images to our, our type of property owner. The owners raise their hands and then they fill out a form right there on Facebook. And then you get an email notifying you notifying you of the lead and that you can either get an email, you can get a text message, you can have it sent to your CRM. It doesn't matter what, you know, whatever methodology you have in order to, to, uh, to work your leads. And that's really what we're talking about. And gotcha. so again, um, the other thing is this, I want to encourage everybody here is that there's not a whole lot of tech skills required. You know, like um, uh, the I, I also know how to do PPC. PPC is a lot pay per click. Pay per click with youth with uh, Google is a lot. It's a lot more complicated to do. Here with Facebook, you don't really need uh, a whole lot of technical skills to get everything up and running. Um, so then now we covered this already. So again, with the targeting, uh, I'm going to assume that for most of you, you're going to start off just selecting one entire state. You're not going to go into intermediate or advanced. That's my recommendation for everybody here on the call. To give you an idea of baseline numbers, if you're targeting the, a, na a national, meaning you're targeting you know, two or three, four or five or six states together, you're, you're going to have lead costs of somewhere between $5 to $10 per lead. If you're targeting statewide, then generally our costs are about $10 to $20 a lead, typically more along the line of $10 to $12. You know, ten to twelve dollars a lead is, is kind of like so. If I'm advertising on, uh, and I'll show you some examples. If I'm advertising in Florida, that's kind of what I want. And if I'm advertising now, you can advertise the county. I can say, look, you go Google. I mean, look, Facebook. I want leads in my local county, but you're gonna you're gonna spend more money per lead, um, and you have to be okay with that. And my rule of thumb is fifty leads. Uh, now, some of my students are doing better, meaning that uh, fifty leads to get a deal. Some of them are doing much better, and it all depends on you and your capabilities. If you mm -hmm. if sure. you're if you know how to talk to sellers, if you know how to comp properties, if you know uh, if you're experienced, then you have an upper hand, which means that you're going to have an easier chance of converting these leads than somebody else. And so, but but as a general rule of thumb, you got to be go go into this thinking I'm going to generate 50 seller leads in order to get traction, in order to get myself a deal. Right. Um, and you know what? That, it's, it's so I'm glad you brought that up because I, I've heard so many people test the waters with Facebook marketing. And I think the fact that they're just testing, um, you know, it, it it's not going to work. I've seen people throw money at Facebook. They either don't generate any leads or they get a handful of leads and they kind of just give up and move on and say, I'm going to go back to direct mail. I'm going to go back to like what well, basically what everyone else is doing. Right. Yeah. And you know what? This this thing applies to everything because. If, if, if you were to tell me somebody, you know, I, I'm talking to you and you said, hey, I tried cold calling and it didn't work. And I said, well, how many how many hours did you spend cold calling? And you said, well, I, I spent an hour or two calling the other day and I and I and I generated three leads Then yeah. you know, you're not you're not doing you're not doing what's required for that strategy. Exactly. So this whole principle applies to any strategy. Now, I think that Facebook, it, um, uh, the lead cost is a lot, a lot, a lot easier to deal with than, say, direct mail, you know, direct mail lead costs are much higher depending on the market, but they're definitely higher than, than Facebook. And so with Facebook, you have at least a large number of leads coming to you at a relatively uh, lower cost per lead. Uh, so I'll give you an example. So um, this is a campaign that I ran for Florida, and this one uh, generated 29 leads, 29 leads at uh, $9.26 a lead, right? So we spent $268. Here's another campaign we ran that was we generated 50 leads across three different campaigns, and that was at a cost of ten dollars and eighty cents a lead. So we spent 540 leads. So it's That's a so very cheap. yeah, a very very low cost per lead. Which also too, you know, if you're a beginner and your lead cost is 100 150, like you're sweating bricks because you're like, oh my gosh, like this lead just came in. I gotta I gotta like I gotta I gotta nurture this lead. This is like you you, you almost have to bring the lead in like a little blanket. Uh, and like a little a, a little pillow, uh, they have to bring the lead to you because if you drop it, that's all. You know, you know the benefit to having these many leads is obviously you don't want to drop the ball on a viable lead. But you know, if you've got that many coming in, then it you know the risk and and the uh, the anxiety you feel around these leads is going to be different as well. Yeah. Uh, By the way, I, I noticed I, I noticed those cute little pillows you have the YouTube and the Facebook. Those are real cute, Chico. Yeah. You know what? The funny thing is, I ordered these on 
Amazon, and I didn't read the fine print because when I got them, they didn't include the inside. It was just a <laughs> little cover. Are you serious? Like, yeah. And I'm like, what the hell is this? And then, and then my wife is like, no, they never come with that. And so, so I ended up spending like, and they were expensive. And then, so now, and they were, they were from China. So I'm sure that these are not officially sanctioned uh, pillows from Facebook yeah. or from YouTube. Yeah. By, by, the, by the way, yeah. you want to know something funny? Aside from those pillows, you are perfectly positioned where you have a hat that one, I'm not even going to say, it. why don't you show people that hat? Cause it oh. looks like it's on your head. But it's actually not on your head. It's this one. Me. There you go. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> I've got props. I've got props. I've got lots. Yeah, of props. I see oh. that. Yes. Yes. I wish oh, I would. Man. I should. I, I, I wish I would have had my old man mask. Uh, that would. I don't even cool. know where to go with that, man. But go yeah. ahead. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to give you guys some tips, and you know, um, uh, what I'm going to do is, um, uh, we'll give you a link that you, I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to give, uh, as a special favor to, uh, Alex, I'm going to give you guys two of, uh, sample ads, uh, that I have that you can use for Facebook to my best converting ads. And so then as I'm going through this, you know, you don't have to worry about, oh man, I got one to take a screenshot of this. Uh, I'm going to give you, we're going to give you a link where you can download, uh, those ads. Um, so the couple quick things, number one is that, um, the, the one of the things that you create on Facebook in order to get started advertising, which by the way, I don't have this on the slides, but number one is you want to advertise through your, you don't want to advertise through your personal account. You want to go to business.facebook.com. You're going to go ahead and create an account there and you're going to advertise as a business on Facebook, not as, because if you're, if you have a personal profile on Facebook, then you have the ability to run ads, but you don't want to run ads from there. You want to run ads from the business.facebook.com. Very important. Um, I'm not going to get into the reasons why, but just trust me, that's the way to do it. Uh, so then the, the 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 next thing you need on Facebook is you need uh, a, a page. You need a business page. And there's two ways to do a business page. One is on the right. I don't know if anybody here, I see it says, we buy houses, my MIA. So mm -hmm. I think that means Miami. Uh, so if that's your page, I'm sorry. But um, <laughs> that's not a good example of a page. You're very generic, very corporate, you know, stock photos, and, and that's not going to do you any good. What you want is you want a personal page. And, and so uh, I have different pages. But, for example, for me, it's Chris Buys Houses. Um, if Alex is advertising, it'd be Alex Buys Houses. He got pictures of him, his family. He has a nice picture of him showing up so that when people see the ad, they see an actual human being, not a picture of a face. And the reason for that is that, you know, in our business, you, you could argue that, oh, yeah, I want to build a brand reputation. I want to build a big company. And so that way the, the market knows. But the challenge is, is with our segment of the market, the customers that we do, we, we do business with. It's not as if, like, for example, if I love Coca-Cola, I'm going to love Coca-Cola all of my life. And so Coca-Cola mm -hmm. wants, wants to brand it so that whenever I go to the theater or the movie uh, with the theater or the restaurant, they told me they have Pepsi. You know, I yell at them and I throw and I, and I walk out and discuss, right? They want that, but as a, the sellers, they're in and out of the need to sell. Once a seller buy, once a seller sells a property, that's it. We may never do business with them again. And so, yeah. so what matters is that personal relationship. Mm -hmm. And what we have, we've tested both. It always works better if you're coming across as a as an individual and you're coming across in a personal way. So that's tip Absolutely. number one: is create a business page that's more personal in nature. And then um, your website. Now your website here. Um, Here's the thing. This is a pet peeve of mine. Don't you need a website now? Um, do you have a, who? Who's you recommend Carrot for the website, right, Pardo? Yeah, absolutely. We've been using Carrot for years. Um, yeah, yeah, the link, what's the link that they can use to get? Yeah, uh, Flip, if you guys check out, uh, go to flipempire.com forward slash carrots. All right. So um, yeah. So flip anywhere that I'm not. Uh, um, flipempire.com forward slash carrot. Right. Get a website there. You need a website anyway because you need it for advertising on Facebook. But here's the thing. Don't get a website with some crazy-ass domain. Like if your company is Quick Property LLC, right, or, you know, some you know some really strange name, don't use a name like that. Uh, what you want to do is you want to pick a domain that in one sentence you can establish credibility with the property owner and you can also tell them what it is you do. So if I call Alex and I say, hey, Alex, this is Chris. You saw my post on Facebook. 
uh, I'm lo we're looking for a few properties to buy and you submitted your form and you say, hey, this is, uh, so, uh, let me refer. If I say, hey, hey, Alex, this is Chris from sell your Florida home or it could be sell your Michigan home today. Mm -hmm. Like already, like he doesn't have to think about like, what's what's this QLVC LLC for properties.com. Like who the hell are you? Yeah. Like he right. knows in one instant, he's like, oh, he has a website and they're looking to buy properties. I get it. So just pick a domain. Now the domain doesn't have to be the same name as your page, right? Yeah, just pick right. A domain that makes sense. Um, but pick a domain that is uh, that that gives the seller a right away an explanation of what you do. Um, now the next thing is um, so again, now we have to create an ad. So this is kind of like what typical real estate ads look like. Um, this is like a, the the don't do this. You know, there's no it's we buy houses cash. It's not anything personal. It has a, 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 the little picture up at the upper left. It's just some generic photo. Here's some stock photo they probably got from from um, uh, from uh, from uh, Google or whatever. Yeah. And then uh, so it's you don't want to do that. What you want to do is if you look at it, this is the type of ad that we that we have. Right. It's, it has my picture up at the top has a picture that looks like it's, and I'm gonna give you some ideas and some images, but you know, the images are key. You gotta always be looking at and creating different images, et cetera. And you know, um, the, the it, it's more conversational copy. The, I'm gonna give you guys two, this is not the one that I recommend. I have two ads that I'm gonna give you guys that are gonna be different than this one here. So the ones that I, I say that I recommend you guys start with are the ones that I'm gonna give you. Um, but in essence, this is, how the ads look like. So if you notice, if you look at that versus this, you're going to look at this and you're going to keep on scrolling. Why? Because it looks like an advertisement. If you're going to go, if you look at this, this at least catches your attention. So what's going to catch your attention is going to be the image. And so you will always got to find uh, good images. The images are the, the images that, to, that work best is really ugly houses, right? That picture on the left, the picture on the right there looks like, unfortunately, a tornado or something went through there. Um, here is, I'm always testing. Uh, any idea, uh, Pardo, which image did the best? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a wild guess and say top left with that ugly, ugly looking face. No, no. It's actually the image on the right. Uh, so, so Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. The image on the right did better. So that's a positive for you guys because you might be thinking, well, gee, if the image on the left won, then you might be thinking... I'm not as ugly as Chico on Facebook. I'll never be able to get these ads to work. So guess what? Hope is there with you because you don't need my ugly face to be there. Uh, hold on, hold on. We're not going to continue until you show everybody that face on the live. <laughs> All right, go ahead, man. Thank you. Yeah, I told, uh, I, uh, was it you I told the other day? I told you the other day. I have a folder. Uh, you guys know that I, I do YouTube stuff and, and, and everything. And so I have a folder on my computer with over a hundred different Chris Chico faces, all kinds yes. of faces. And just the other day, I recorded even more because my team said, Chico, we need more variety. <laughs> so, Dude, I, and, and when you told me that, I was actually surprised, but I don't know, knowing you, I should know that you would have, only you have a hundred pictures of yes. different faces, like, you know, so. Yes, I have, well, look at this image here. What do you think about this image? Do you think this image performed well or did not perform well? Probably not. Did not perform well. It did perform well. <laughs> you see, dude, stop asking me questions. You're making me look bad, bro. Like, <laughs> uh, I mean, look, look, okay, so here's the thing. Obviously, this is like it grabs your attention, but it's it's pretty alarming. It's pretty disturbing. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why it performed well because people yeah. just, you know, if, if it if it bleeds, what's that saying? If it bleeds, it reads kind of right. thing. Exactly. I, I exactly. So um, here's another one. Did this one do well or did not do well? Okay, uh, third time the card. I'm gonna say it did not. This one, this one did do well. It did. Do, this is this is how much you know, Pardo. You know that. How are I'm these? Stop. Stop why are these people? Why are these people following you? I, I don't know. I, I'm asking myself the same question. Obviously, I don't know which ads and which images work well with Facebook. Why do you think I have you on, dude? So, so uh, I I did a, a search on Google. Uh, looking for code violation. I searched on Google code violation houses, right? Uh, and, and and so I found this picture of a, of a code inspector leaving the house. And so I took my picture, superimposed on him, put the little sold sign, and that produced 
a good amount of needs. So that one did well. <laughs> it's a, it, the, the stomach. Go back to that picture. The, the belly, the stomach area is pretty much about the same, though. No, no, is that no, right? it isn't. It isn't. No, it isn't. Okay. no. no. <laughs> okay. So, so if, you look, if you look through these images, guys, think about this. We started with this. <clears throat> this is what a lot of I see a lot of investors using. So, yeah. and then I showed you this, but then now I'm showing you that, look, I'm trying different angles, different approaches, different photos, et cetera. What I'm telling you here is you got to test and you got, you can't assume that what you think will work will work, right? Because you never know. And at the mm -hmm. end of the day, you got to get an image that, that grabs somebody's attention. And really that's what I'm trying to, to really illustrate with all these different images that are here. I had another yeah. image that I did. I don't have it here where it's a, uh, a little, it's like this, this grassy area and in the distance you see this little tiny house like almost like a house out in the distance right and i superimpose a hand pointing to the house and that outperform everything wow so you, but let me you, ask you a question. In, in all seriousness why did this image perform uh, well i mean aside from the fact that it's kind of just a funny image but go back to the one that was like side by side that had your face in the top left why do you think that the bottom right did better than the top left I have, I think maybe this is more alarming and this is more funny. That's the only okay. thing. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think this one is, this one's more a uh, funnier and I, but I had no idea. I'm always, you know, it, it, it yeah. it's interesting because they, you, you just never know. You just never yeah. know. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> um, now, by the, the way, uh, somebody wants to know if, if this is Alex Rodriguez I'm interviewing. Oh, not somebody. That's Eric Kohler, one of our <laughs> friend members. He wants to know if this is Alex Rodriguez. Listen, let me tell you, when I, when I, uh, when I was younger and I had more hair and I was a little bit beefier um, and I was always tan because in my younger days, I used to go to the tanning salon. And now we're, we're really revealing all my secrets. Um, I would get, I would get, uh, people would just like always do a double take. I, went, I remember going down to La Carreta down in uh, Southwest 8th and I sat down there to eat and this, the waiter comes to me and I know it. I know he's thinking, he looks at me. And he says in Spanish, is it you? Is it you? Is it you? And I'm like, no, no, it's not me. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So um, the other thing is uh, video marketing. I would say start with images first. It's a lot easier. Then you would do image. The easier thing to do with images is just if you have an ad, just take what you wrote in the ad, take out your phone, nothing complicated. You don't need to have anything complicated. Um, I use a, um, I use a, uh, I, I have a Samsung. I hate iPhones. Uh, and I, I dislike people that use iPhones, but I'm willing to make an exception for uh, Pardo. I always say that um, Apple is for people that never figured out how to use a Windows computer, but it's okay. Wow. Hold on. Can I, like, do I have the ability to mute you here? Give me a second. Hold on. <laughs> By the way, you've just insulted about 75% of, of the people watching would be right. my guest more or less. Yeah, I realize that. I realize that. But <laughs> So, so I use, you know, for you app people with Apple, uh, you may, you, you have to use a dongle, but basically use your phone, your phone, your device is right there, has a pretty good camera. I use a mic. All good audio is key when you're doing video. That's the most important thing. Your people are always willing to forgive bad video, uh, but they're never willing to forgive bad audio. Um, yeah. and just record it, you know, uh, one take, uh, and a video should be one to three minutes. If you're, if you're doing stuff on Facebook, people don't have the same attention span as they do on YouTube. And, um, and then, but, but don't start with that. Just, uh, I was showing you this because you can take the, what you have on the ad, and then you can just simply record a quick video on it. And then now, um, a service that I use is this one here. You can go to clipscribe.com. You can do a video, you upload it, it'll do the nice title up at the top and the captions on the bottom like that because what happens is that people on their mobile device typically are using, are, are watching without any sort of sound. And so, mm -hmm. but, but again, this is more like a stage two. So I would worry more about getting your campaign up, working with images, and then later on you can get more involved and do, and do videos, right? Got it, got it. So then now how did, how leads come in? So... <clears throat> They, the prospects fill out a lead form. Um, so, and again, I, uh, when I give you guys the, uh, the link to watch, when I give you guys the link for the, for the two ads, uh, there's also a few things that I didn't get a chance to cover here, like how the lead forms work on Facebook and a few other nuances. So I have a video that, uh, that you also have access to that I'll kind of give more detail than what we're going through now, because we have a limited time here but I have a lot more in-depth uh, video tutorial that you guys can see. Um, 
<laughs> but in that sense, we create a form inside of Facebook that they person clicks on the button, opens right up there on Facebook, they fill out the information, and then they just close it up and they go about their business looking at cat videos, but now you have the lead. And the lead, you use a software called Zapier. It's not really complicated. That in essence acts as a, as a pathway from Facebook to uh, wherever you want the lead to go. And you could have it sent to your email, you could have it sent to your text, uh, to your text message, you can have it sent to your CRM if you're using Podio or Freedom Software, whatever you're using. It, it, and then you can always download the leads manually from Facebook, but I don't recommend it because you want to try to get a hold of people as quickly as you can once you submit the form. And Absolutely. in the end, this is something really important. I want to go through this. I don't have it on the slide here because um, I forgot to mention it. I want to talk about text messaging. Okay. In general, the lead comes in. It's always, you have to think about it. If you're cold calling, and you're hitting somebody they don't know who you are you've got to you, there's a couple of different obstacles you get got to get past that obstacle of are you my are you the friendly pakistanian calling me about my irs uh, lien that's they're gonna arrest me any minute you know those crazy calls that you get i don't know if you get any of those calls i haven't gotten any of those calls i was about yeah. to say but I, i'll take your word for it yeah i i recently had a guy i recently had a guy that called me about my ac vets wanting to see if i want to clean them out and then I told him, I told him, I said, look, I'm more than happy to have you guys come and clean the vents as long as you, you mainly get rid of the animals inside the vents. Because I don't want them. <laughs> it led to a very interesting five-minute conversation where it was very difficult for me to hold my laughter. Uh, <laughs> I can hold no one imagine. Yeah, I was trying to explain to him how they make all these weird noises at night, and and I hear these screeching, and, but I'm just really afraid to go up there. And <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, so you know, when you're cold calling somebody, you got to get over. You got that first obstacle where like that person wants to know, like, who the hell are you? Who who is this person that's calling me? Then when you get past that, now you've got to, you know, there's still a couple of different obstacles in order to gain their trust. This person saw you on Facebook, and they reached out to you. So you're, you're not a, a pest. You're more like a welcome guest in their world. And so the conversation's easy. It's, hey, this is Chris. You could say from Chris buys houses because that's what they saw. Uh, Chris buys houses. You saw my post on Facebook because mm -hmm. they, they may not know that it's an ad. We know it's an ad, but they don't know it's an ad. Um, and so I recently had a friend come over and I was explaining to her how Facebook works. And she's like, oh, my God, you mean those things are ads that people pay for? And I was like, she had no idea. She had no idea. And then I then I proceeded to show her how Google work and how the internet was this amazing though. Never mind. So anyway, <laughs> that was a bad a feeble yeah. attempted at humor. So yeah, um, what a guy. Yeah. So here's the thing. Oh, you gotta communicate with people in the way that they want to communicate with you know, ideally. So if you're if you're cold calling, obviously you're getting somebody on the phone. If you're sending a direct mail piece and they're calling in, then you calling them makes sense. But what I, we found is that with Facebook. We find that, um, and this happened with a, with a client of mine, where if you look at the whole continuum of the conversation, you got the beginning and you got the end, and then you got the middle. The the prospect comes in, you interact with them by text messaging, you get that initial flow of conversation going. You might ask them a few things about the property, how quickly are you looking to move, et cetera. And then now, if you think about it, now you're in the place where all their friends are. You're mm. in the place that they are in all the time, which is text messaging. And then a perfect example, because Greg, Greg, uh, uh, it was Greg, ba he just closed a deal for uh, $35,000. And, uh, and, and it was perfect. It was precisely this. Everything up to the point where now you negotiated price was by text. And then he said to the seller, hey, look, let's discuss price. It's easier if we chat about it over the phone. Let me know when, when's the best time to chat. He got on the phone with the seller, negotiated, went through the price. Then after every single thing after that was done by text. So if you think about your normal life, you and I, like Pardo and I, we're, uh, we're, he thinks we're really good friends. I think he's a he's an okay friend. He thinks he's a really, really good friend. So there's a disparity oh. there. Yeah, no. Wow. <laughs> what a, hold, hold, hold on, man. Hold, how, how do I mute this guy? Give me a second. Sure, yeah. there, there is. He, he's muted. You can't hear him. No, right. go ahead, man. But, you know, ahead. Pardo and I are really good friends. But, the, uh, you know, if you think about the times that him and I get on the phone and talk, versus the time that we spend going back and forth on Boxer, going back and forth on text messaging, going back and forth on email, 
It, it, it's 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 like this much on phone. The rest of it is the stream of communication. That's how your clients are operating. So be okay with that. <laughs> be don't force the issue, and especially don't send a text message to the seller, and then next thing you know, the like you're trying to get all the seller. The seller responds by text, and the next thing you know is you jump on them and you try to call them. Like you try to blow up their phone. Like they didn't invite you to call them yet. Keep the conversation by text. So what I'm saying is that it's fa- if it was Facebook specifically, a lot of these online lead generation methods, you got to warm up to them. And warming up to them is communicating with them in a way that they feel more comfortable communicating with them until they get to the point where they actually want to talk to you on the phone. Does that make sense, Pardo? Yeah, that, no, and, that, and that's a great tip. And actually, you know, it's interesting because I was always like, I could argue both sides of it. You know, I, I would always tell my team like, hey, listen, once you start establishing communication by text, like pick up the phone and call them. But you bring up a really, really good point. They didn't necessarily tell you to call them. So do you recommend just continue the conversation on text or would you advise like ask them, hey, would, would you prefer to talk or would you rather like, in other words, would you put the ball on their court by just asking them or would you just assume and communicate by text? Well, what, what we, what I recommend is, what I recommend, I forgot there that the camera was on me and I just did that. So yeah, that, that having a, a seizure. What I recommend is you throw the lures out and you let the fish bite. What that means is that if a lead comes in, you text him. Then you might also send him an email. And then you might also give them a call. And then now how they respond back to you, you keep the communication in that channel. So in other words, if if they if they if you did all that and they came back to you with text, now then continue on with text and follow that. Because we've mm-hmm. got sellers that communicate yeah. by email. We have sellers that are uh, that that never replied by text, but then we call them, and then we realize, oh, they're an older person. They're not really texting. They prefer the phone. So it's it's you throw them out, and then you figure out where they bite, and then that's how you continue the conversation. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so so again, guys, I'm going to give you. Uh, we'll give out the link at the end. I, I'm going to give you a link to a couple of the ads and another training that I have that'll go into more of the lead forms and how that works, etc. Um, and I know we have short time here together because I also wanted to cover some tips for virtual wholesaling. So, you know, before we get into this, so, you know, big picture is that think about me, my example, I'm going to go in and, and the best example I have to explain this concept is, and I even think, I want you to tell me if you think this is a good example. <laughs> so let's say today I wanted to buy, let's say I wanted to buy a shirt today and I, I, I'm a black shirt, buy, huh? a black shirt, a black shirt. Of course I, wear. I only wear black shirts. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to buy, I want to buy a Hugo Boss shirt today. So I have a couple options, right? One option is I can go to Marshall's and I can go and try to see if I can find me a Hugo Boss shirt. I might go to Marshall's, uh, but I may not find a Hugo Boss shirt, <clears throat> but you know what? They had an Armani shirt and I'm like, you know, it's a black shirt. It's a good shirt. I'll take that shirt. And then maybe three days, four days later pass, I go to Marshall's again and they finally have that Hugo Boss shirt that I wanted. Right. But you know what? The way the Marshalls works is that they give you they they only have excess inventory, right? They have what everybody else can't sell. But now, if if today, if I wanted a Hugo Boss shirt and I said, "Come hell or high water, I need a Hugo Boss black shirt," what are my options? I gotta go to the Hugo Boss store or I gotta go to Nordstrom, right? Those are my only two options, right? Hypothetically. Mm-hmm. But if I go there, I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna because I'm gonna pay full retail price because that's what I want. I wanted today. That's the concept of advertising statewide and nationally versus, say, let's look at example statewide. That's an example of advertising statewide versus targeting by the county or mm-hmm. by the city. What I'm telling Facebook is, look, because what happens is that when I advertise locally, and I'm telling Facebook is no matter what, I want you to try to find me somebody today in this small mm-hmm. geographic region. And guess what? Facebook is going to charge you a lot of money. Mm-hmm. If, if you advertise statewide, then what you're doing is you're telling Facebook, hey, I'm interested in the whole state. And then and then whenever you have viable leads, please send them to me because nobody else wants them. Right. Got and it. that's really what happened. And what happens is you're tapping into uh, excess inventory. So when you're advertising statewide, you are going to still get leads in your local area. You're going to get leads. If I'm here in Broward, I'm going to get leads in Broward and in Dade. I'm going to get leads in Tampa and in Jacksonville and these large metro areas. But I'm also going to get leads in other areas that I may not have thought. Like I'm going to get leads in Melbourne or in Sarasota or maybe in Ocala and other these other smaller areas. And, and you go further down the areas. But that's the whole concept of it. You know, we're, we're kind of operating like, hey, we want good leads, but we just don't want to pay for retail, for retail mm-hmm. price. 
and we're just going to go to Marshalls and we're still going to get a good shirt. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Makes a lot of sense. All right. So, so let's talk about virtual wholesaling. So let's say you generate these leads. And now the biggest thing that people ask me is, okay, how do I sell these deals? Right. So, and again, I'm a big fan of the 80, 20 principle, meaning that, um, you know, the, what, what are the, what's the easiest way? <laughs> so the number one is photos. How do you get photos? Number one, the easiest way is to ask the property owner to take a photo for you. I mean, everybody has one of these nowadays and you tell the property owner, I said, you know, Hey, Alex, I'm going to go ahead and get this submitted to our underwriting department so we can go ahead and get the process started. It will certainly help me. Now, typically, I have to order a, a an inspection to go out there and just to take photos even before I submit the property. And that might delay us, you know, three, four or five days. If you would be so kind, would you mind taking photos of the property for me? And I'll, and I'll, and I'll send you a quick text message letting you know what I need. You know, a, a picture of the front, picture of the back, picture of every room, picture of the kitchen, et cetera. And that will help and expedite things. And then um, most of the time they're willing to say yes. You can also, if they give you some resistance, I say, well, here's what I do. Normally I pay this company 50 bucks. I'm more than happy to send you the money if you can do it for me. Because it doesn't matter. We have to spend it anyway. But if you can take the photos for me, now you can do the same thing option two with the tenants. You know, the, the owners are more willing to take the photos for you. The tenants are going to think you're a pain in the ass. But if you tell the tenants, hey, look, normally we take this, you know, we have the company that takes it. Um, but if you want to take it for us, then we'll pay you instead and not them. And we can PayPal you the money. I guarantee you that they're going to be like taking the most amazing photos than, than they ever thought possible. Why? Because they want the money. Now, option number three is we use a service called BPO Photo Flow. Uh, they do have a special now with this whole coronavirus that they'll take exterior photos of any property for $15. Typically, if you're going to do interior, it's 50 to 75 bucks ish, depending on the area. They take great pictures. Most of the people taking photos for them are real estate agents or appraisers. So they kind of know what they're doing anyway. And option number three is BPO Photo Flow. They send you the pictures. They're really quick about it. Um, <clears throat> Those are the top three options. Another service is we go look, but we go look for me has been spotty. So for my go-to has been BPO photo flow okay. and in, terms, in terms of hosting the photos. And I say this from the perspective of now you got all these photos. First of all, they, I forgot to mention here, have the sellers send you the photos by email, not by text. When they send you the photos by text, text message automatically degrades the quality of the photos to make it smaller. So right. they can reach you. If you send them by email, then you're going to get nice big photos. And that it's and also make sure you tell the seller to take them like this. Don't take them like that. That's so annoying when people take photos like that. Take them like this. Uh, make sure you tell them to do that. And we need the phone verdict. Now the other thing you could do, you could do a quick video for them and and, and of uh, of showing them uh, showing a, a, a potential property owner how you how to take photos. But just tell them what you want, and that's going to eliminate um, you needing to um, uh, uh, you know to get bad photos. <laughs> the other thing you can do is you can go to BPO Photo Flow. And on their services, they they list for you the photos and, and the stuff that they take. You can go there, just copy and paste that, and then mod, change it a little bit, depending on what you want. And now you have this, the thing that you're going to send this to the seller that, that explains to them how you take the photos. Yeah, uh, Chico, let me, let me actually throw in a few more tips. And by the way, the third one that I added there on the screen, get them by email, not by text, is a fantastic tip. So ever since COVID-19 hit, we have transitioned to doing more deals virtually now. Matter of fact, Chico, one of the leads that you generated from Facebook that you kicked over to our team, we just got that property under contract. And um, Adrian was actually out there taking pictures. But what we've been doing that we have found has worked and, and what we've done that we found didn't work is make it a part of the negotiation. In other words, when you're negotiating with the seller over the phone um, and you are about to come to an agreement, instead of agreeing to their price, you know, say something to the effect of, you know, Mr. Seller, if I could get my partner, if I could get my underwriting department or whatever, if I can get them to sign off on this price, would you be able to get us 20 to 30 pictures by email? Yeah. Do that as opposed to agree on a price. And then after the fact, go out to them and say, Hey, I need pictures. You kind of lose some leverage. The second thing we've done is that we, and we, we just did this a couple of days ago. We offered a seller $50 at the, at the time that we signed the contract to text us over 30 quality pictures. And, uh, and a really good friend of mine actually shared with me their SOP on walking the seller through exactly how to take pictures. Don't assume guys that people know how to take pictures. It's quite the opposite. Most people do not have any idea how to take quality pictures that you can then use in your marketing. So 
Um, between what Chico mentioned as far as getting the the you know the pictures by email, not by text, and some of those other things, I think that, that can really help you out. And I also I took a screenshot of it or a picture of it. I love those resources because um, I had heard of WeGo Look, but I had never heard of BPO Photo Flow. Yeah, it, it's a it's a most horrible name um, that, that you could imagine. I think it, it took me a while to even remember that name, but yeah, they're a great provider. Uh, the other thing is, you know, when you're now that you have the photos, you want to be able to show them to your buyer. The easiest way to get them to your buyer is just use Google Drive, put them in a folder on Google Drive, and you make that folder shareable to anyone who has the link. And then <clears> when you are sending a buyer a photo, you can just easily send them the Google Drive link, which is very mobile friendly. They'll open it up on their phone. They'll be able to flip through all the photos. If you wanted to, you can use Dropbox as well, I think. Uh, but either one of those two. And I mentioned the last two options because then uh, doing that where, you know, if you, if you if you think, oh, man, I got to put a website together and this and that, then you're putting a bunch of obstacles in the way unnecessarily. You know, you yeah. just need a place to store the photos and send the link and then that's it. Um, now, in terms of buyers, I'm going to give you guys my three recommend recommendations for buyers. Number one is I think everybody should have two to three wholesalers uh, that they can tap into in any market. Right. And, 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 and so the easiest way to get those is you search on Craigslist. You can search for, you know, on Craigslist, houses, houses for sale, search for hard money, investor, special cash. You know, um, those the typical terms you're going to come across. Uh, also, you may come across hard money lenders. And so when you do, you can always reach out to them. And what you're looking to do is um, you, you, you want to get on their list. And you also want them to and ask him, hey, um, do you sell other people's properties? And if so, what are your terms? How do you how do you normally work with people? Um, you, you know, and again, it's hard for me to go into every single detail. But general rule of thumb is that if I'm talking to Alex and he's a wholesaler, I'm going to ask him, OK, how do you normally work? Now, for me, I would like to hear him say, well, it depends on the deal. You know, typically, um, you know, we prefer for you to include the fee or we would tack on the fee. And, you know, depending on the wholesaler, they might say, look, we're making we're looking to make five thousand or seventy five hundred on the deal. But we're flexible. Um, I would probably not. I, I typically I try not to work with a wholesaler that wants 50 percent, because if you got a deal that you're making twenty five, thirty K, then yeah. um, then, you know, giving up 50 percent of that deal when you you have marketing costs on your side is a little bit rich. You know, and, but you have to be flexible. You know, if if if, uh, if we have a deal and it's a small deal that we're only making, you know, ten thousand dollars gross or you know, $7,000 gross, then we may have to split that 50-50 because there's not enough meat on the bone there. Yeah. Um, so the other thing is, um, and again, the other, I'll come back to one last comment. The other thing is uh, an agreement. Typically, uh, they either say, hey, no problem, I'll sell it for you, and it's kind of on a handshake, virtual handshake. Some of them will want to sign an agreement. Um, what I would say is I, I, I'm okay with signing agreements, but I never want to sign an exclusive agreement that gives sure. them completely take over the deal and that now you can't do anything with it. Now, all yeah. that being said, that very much depends. If you've got a deal, you're at your last, you know, Hail, Hail Mary, you haven't been able to move it. And then this wholesaler says, I think I might have a buyer, but I need 50% and I need you to sign an agreement and give me full exclusive to the deal for the next two or three days. But if I got nothing, then I'll be like, okay, no problem. I'll give it to you. Why? Because it's 100%. an open But if you're yep. at the beginning of the process, then it may not be a viable option. Agreed. Um, to agents. Agents are a great resource. Um, um, one option, I think you, uh, do you have a link for PropStream that um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with? PropStream? Yeah, yeah. Gr great, great tool. I actually started using them about a month ago and really, really impressed. If you guys head over to uh, flipempire.com forward slash data, um, full disclosure, that is an affiliate link. It costs you the same, but we get a few extra pennies if you use it. Uh, but it's a tool that we're currently using right now and really, really impressed with it. The data has been phenomenal. And matter of fact, we just went into a, a market using Chico's techniques and, and a lot of what he's sharing here. And we're using that to comp properties on the phone with sellers. So it's been really, really good. Uh, I'll type it in here, flipempire.com forward slash data. Yeah, so with that, uh, you could use uh, PropStream and then you could search. They have a, I was watching one of Paul's uh, Paul's videos uh, on the, because uh, they improved it a bunch of, with the different things, but now they have, a, uh, they could do property flippers. Um, mm -hmm. they, they, yeah. they do a search for property flippers, which the software uh, monitors a property that was bought as cash. And if that property is currently active for sale, then they look at that as a flipper. And you can look in there and be able to find, find the real estate agents. And then you can also go on, on Zillow and uh, especially you can go on Zillow for wherever you have the property and try to find a real estate agent. So big mm -hmm. picture, 
big picture is, um, you know, in the past, everybody kind of poo-poos uh, agents, but agents, when you're doing virtually, could be a great asset because they could also be your boots on the ground. You know, a, a, a big issue that people have sometimes is, hey, I'm going to have the buyer, you know, uh, and there's a lot of things we didn't cover. Obviously, you have to vet the buyers and everything else. But, you know, hey, uh, our agent can act as a referee when you're showing the property. Make sure that everything goes the way it should be. Um, and typically an agent. And the other thing with an agent, if you find one, if you find 10 cash buyers, you have 10 cash buyers. If you found 10 agents and each agent has three cash buyers, now you got 30 cash buyers to work with. Right. Mm -hmm. And and typically agents make 3%. I recommend, you know, offer them 5%. If the deal is small, then you might do a, a flat fee. And then, you know, you just ask them, you know, have you worked with investors familiar with assignments? Uh, are you, uh, you tell them I'm happy to do a commission agreement, happy to pay you on the HUD. And, and you just find, you know, if the, if the agent says to you, oh, no, I, you know, I don't like wholesalers and, you know, what, anything negative, then you just don't work with them. But it's very easy to find a core group of agents. And again, I'm not, keep in mind is this, you're not looking to go out and build a list of a thousand or 2000 people. You want just a core group of people, two or three wholesalers, 10 agents, right? And yeah. then, and then some cash buyers. Yeah. Got Gino, really quick, brother, and I know we're kind of getting short on time here, but really quick, what's the conversation sound like when you reach out to a, to an agent in a completely different market that you just, you know, you picked up a deal there? Um, what's that conversation sound like in 30 seconds or so? I mean, it's just simple. It's just if you're the agent, say, hey, hey Alex, I noticed you have a property listed at such and such address. And it looks like it's, it's a real estate investor. I'm also a real estate investor and I have a property that I need help in selling. And uh, I'd love to be able to work with you if you have either that buyer or any other buyer you're working with and more than happy to chat with you and tell you exactly how I work. Do you think that would be of interest to you? And then they'll say, yeah, tell me more. I said, okay, great. Well, what I have is I have a property um, uh, under contract and I'm looking to sell my agreement uh, and assign the contract. Have you ever done that sort of transaction before? And so now that's that next layer. And you can always explain to them how that works. And you say, you know, and then you go over the terms, you know, and tend to, um, um, well, you know, here's how it works is that uh, I, I'm asking, you know, I'm asking $150,000 for the property. I've already built in uh, a $5,000 flat fee for you as the agent. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'd be more than happy to sign a, a commission agreement, you know, just for any buyers that you have. And we'd love to be not only be able to do this one deal for you, but I get deals all the time. And so maybe we could have a, a great relationship where you know, I love working with agents and I love working with them and, you know, to, to sell the properties. I mean, that's really just going off the top of my head. That's really sure. no, that's it's, good. It's, it's the conversation, you know, easy enough. Yep. Yeah. Um, then the next one would be cash buyers go to, you know, uh, my, uh, a lot of my students have great success with this. Search your town uh, on Facebook, right? You look for cash buyers. So Florida cash buyers, um, you know, Miami cash buyers, et cetera. You're going to find a bunch of different groups. Go into the groups, add yourself into the groups, look around the groups to make sure that, okay, let me see what properties they're posting, what's going on. You're, if, you, if, you, if you sign up for 10 groups, you might find three groups that there's a lot of activity, lots of people posting deals and lots of interaction. And now that could be a place where you are then going to be able to post your deal in in, in a Uh oh, a couple. Chico, of okay, okay, yeah, you, you you froze up for a quick second. If you can rewind like five seconds. Yeah, what I was talking about. Um, just you, you, you're gonna go into Facebook groups. Look, look up your state, your county, your city, cash buyer groups. You're gonna find like eight or ten of them. Then once you find eight or ten of them, can you still hear me, Pardo? Yep, yep, I can hear you. You're good. Once you find eight or ten of ten of them, go into each group. See out of those ten, what are the top two or three that there's looks like the type of activity that you're looking for. Like if you see a group that they're posting mostly retail properties, et cetera, you might want to test, but you know, you got to be careful because if you go in and start posting all over the groups really quickly, Facebook is going to be like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing, buddy? And then mm -hmm. they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, uh, you know, turn the volume down on your ability to post that group. So okay. that's why I say you got to just, you know, be like a sniper. Um, and, um, and, 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 and you'll be able to find, post your deal there. You're going to be able to work with agents and also with buyers and other wholesalers. And then the other three ways to find buyers is, you know, uh, and I teach how to do this. You can run Facebook ads for buyers. Craigslist, every market is different. Some market that works better than others. Don't put your address when you're posting your property, by the way. You always want to vet the buyer and talk to them first before you give out the address. And then Facebook Marketplace. Again, Facebook Marketplace, every, every area is different. Some areas do better than others. Facebook Marketplace is where you put things to, for sale, uh, but also test there as well. And, and in the end, with these three, like if you look at it, 
with other wholesalers, agents, and, and the cash buyer groups, and you round it up with this, you can go into any market, and even if you have a deal today, within 24 to 48 hours, you covered all bases, and you put yourself in a position where you can get the property sold. I love um, it. I love it. Yeah. Hey, by the way, Chico, let me just jump in really quick. Um, guys, any questions that you have as far as anything Chico has covered here, or if you even have some questions for me, uh, start putting them in the chat box um, as Chico you know, has some more slides to share with you, but that way we can, uh, we can answer all your questions live, well, okay? Well, I'm on my last slide. What? This is it. Yes. I know, I know, I know you're thinking, Chico, I'm only just getting started. Wow. Um, you know. So how to find a title company? You know what I find? The easiest way to find a title company is to look for your local real estate, the, your local RIA, a real estate investment club. Like I would search Miami or Broward, you know, real estate club. You go to their website. And when you go to the website, they always have vendors that pay for them to be featured on their website. And there's always a title company. There is always a property inspection company. And those title companies that are there as preferred vendors, they all they, they know how to deal with real estate investors. They know how to do assignments. They know how to do all the stuff we want them to do. It is the easiest way to find a title company. Easiest way. Um, you can also ask other wholesalers. Uh, but the easiest way I found is you just look for the local RIA, you figure out who the title companies are, you talk to a few of them, and then these are questions that you would ask them. Are you familiar with assignments? Do you do double closings? What additional requirements do you have that I should be made aware of that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you just want to talk to them like a normal human being, you know, like, hey, anything else that I need to know? Any pet peeves when dealing with investors? To, you know, I want to bring you lots of deals, but I, I want it to be a nice, seamless uh, and, and great relationship. What would make our relationship better? You know, um, and, and you just you just have a conversation with them. But this I find is the easiest way to find a, a title company in in your local market. Yep, yep, I love it. And by the way, you know, you bring up a really really good point. Be somebody that is easy to work with. And what I mean by that is, um, put yourself in 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 their shoes. You know, you don't want to be bombarding them and, and calling them and emailing them with all these questions. Do your research, be prepared, be yourself, be friendly, and let them know that you're looking to establish a long-term relationship and uh, and always ask, you know, how can I add value aside from from bringing you files, bringing you deals? Let them know that you're you're serious and you're marketing and, and you're going to be doing deals in that market. So um, yeah. great tips. I'm really glad you brought that up. Yeah, and then um, so I, I was going to give you guys... Uh, two of the uh, best performing ads that I have for Facebook. And then, uh, so if you guys go to flipempire.com forward slash Chico, uh, you go there, you input your email, and then I'm gonna give you the access to the two of them. And then I also have some additional training there that you can watch that goes deeper into a few of the things that I couldn't cover, you know, on our time here together, which is, you know, how the lead form works and, and some of how some of the targeting works. So there's th three different types of targeting on Facebook and, uh, and how they all work together. Um, and give you some examples of other campaigns. So if you go to flipempire.com forward slash Chico, you can get that there. Yeah, uh, brother, really, uh, again, genuinely, really, really appreciate that. I know you and I go back and forth and mess with each other, but really appreciate that. Um, when it comes to Facebook ads and just online marketing, like you, you have things dialed in like most people don't. Um, and so I, I really appreciate it. This is, uh, this is your genius zone. Like you live, eat and breathe this stuff. And, uh, you have forgotten more about this than I know. So, uh, anything and everything online, uh, related and Facebook marketing, dude, I'm always deferring to you. Well, I always say I'm, I'm a better, uh, I, 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 I am always willing to admit that I am not the sharpest real estate investor. Like in other words, you can run, you know, I don't know how to do creative financing. I don't, there's a lot of things that I don't know. But the one thing that I do know how to do is the marketing. And, and, and you know, to a certain extent, you know, you could have, I, I, I'm a firm believer is that you could have 10 different ways to, to slice and dice a deal. But if you don't have a deal to slice and dice, then you got a problem. <laughs> so finding the deals is really where the money's at. Yep. Yeah. And you want to know what, brother? One last point, guys, we're going to open it up for Q&A now. So th there's already a, a list of uh, questions here that we're going to start getting to. So any questions you guys have, nothing is off limits, fire away. Uh, and so uh, I lost my train. I thought I was what I was going to share. Oh, uh, brother, you know this. I'm not I'm not speaking to you, but just more speaking in general to everybody watching. Uh, marketing is one of those skills that you need to spend time on on a daily basis crafting and, yeah. and sharpening that skill because 
regardless of what business you're in, you're in a marketing business. And if you know how to market, you will never starve. That's something that I learned from Dan Kennedy many, many years ago when I read one of his 17 no BS books. Yeah. Uh, so learn how to market. Um, and, and, and obviously marketing online is, is critical. I mean, if you didn't realize that before with COVID-19, hopefully that's like, uh, you know, it's just, it's out in front of you that, that develop that skill. Um, so when it comes to Facebook marketing and online marketing, I mean, Chico's one of the very best, so, um, could not, uh, recommend, you know, him enough. So, and then, uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, and, and there's still sellers, despite the situation as, cause I asked you this yesterday on boxer, cause I was curious about that lady that you went to yesterday, the one that you got, that you guys got the contract for, yep. um, you know, this, that, that particular person, uh, you know, regardless of what's happening out there in the whole news and the coronavirus and everything else, there's a segment of sellers that must sell. They need to sell. They need to get rid of the problem property. And, uh, and, and whether you are a real estate investor and even an agent, if you're here as an agent, you know, I think that dealing with co uh, conventional sellers that uh, don't really have to move, that there's no motivation to move, um, then you're, you're going to struggle. And so getting mm -hmm. in there, I think it's a, I think there's a great opportunity for agents because if you have your, if you have your real estate agent uh, license, then you now have two ways to attack these leads. You can offer to list a lead or you can offer to do the wholesaling. Uh, you can offer to buy it and then wholesale it. So there's a variety of different things you have available. But you know, the main thing I wanted to mention is that you know, despite everything going on here, you know, people are still there's a segment of the population that they don't care. They need yeah. to sell and they need to sell now. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. That's right. Yep. And your job is to get in front of them and provide the service. We all, we, we offer a valuable service to these homeowners. Many people might not know that, but, uh, you know, so, so be out there, obviously lead with integrity, uh, market, get in front of them so that you can provide your service and, uh, and be the solution to their problem. So, uh, my dude, Josh Bacon, uh, Chico and Alex, this was killer. Do you have a video you would recommend for the Facebook to Zapier to Podio integration? Um, Facebook to Zapier. I don't know if in the, I might have, uh, you know, in in the link, I have to. Say, I think in the video that I that uh, when you go to that link, flip anywhere that uh, flip uh, empire .com forward slash chico. Uh, if you go there, um, I think the video that I have does cover something uh, a little bit about Zapier. Um, the you know honestly for that you could easily uh, reach out to Zapier, and they know how to do that. Podio is a little bit different because it depends on who the who who you got your Podio from. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of service providers for Podio, so my hesitancy in that it's not cut and dry. It just depends on who set up your Podio and how do you have it set up and everything else. But it's really not. It's not that complicated. Yeah. And Josh, by the way, brother, um, Josh is part of Ascend. Well, um, we can easily look that up on YouTube or Google, and if I find some resources, we'll post it in the in the Ascend Facebook group. Um, but if you do some searches, it should be pretty easy to find those resources. If not, let me know, and and we'll we'll find something for you, man. Um, all right, uh, guys, questions, any questions you have, uh, uh, type them in here. Uh, let me just start going down the line. Let me start from, uh, early on. Um, a lot of people showing some love. Thank you. Appreciate that guys. Uh, rants, uh, great work amigos. Appreciate that. Uh, let me see here. Okay. Sebastian's got a good question here. Which list from prop stream has worked for you guys the most? Well, for me, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not using list. So, you know, uh, we are, I'll answer that question, but go ahead. Well, for Facebook, one of the options for Facebook is to take your list and to upload it. And so a lot of times people start off with that. And however, that doesn't produce the best results. Because again, if you think about a big picture, Facebook li likes big audiences. They want a big group of people that now they can go out and their algorithm can go and find the right prospect. When you're dealing with an uploaded list, you're, you're feeding Facebook a very small number of prospects that you want to target your ad to, and uh, and you're going to pay a lot of money for that. So for me, I don't use list uh, you know, because of the fact that it you know I don't recommend list uploading. You're always going to get better results by targeting a geographic area. Yep, yep. So I'll answer that question, Sebastian. If you're talking specifically for direct mail purposes, or if you're going to get a list, skip trace it, and then do some text message marketing or some cold calling. 
or RVMs. Quick disclaimer, we talked about this, I think, a couple of days ago. Make sure that you're consulting with a, a TCPA attorney as far as some of the laws are concerned. Um, if you're going to do any type of like ringless voicemails, text messaging, cold calling, things of that nature. Anyways, to answer the question, uh, we've only been using uh, PropStream for about a month now. So admittedly, we don't have a lot of history on our side. But so far, what we have found has worked well is the tax delinquent list and the flippers list. Um, I haven't heard the best about the liens list, but then again, that's somebody else in some other market that I heard that from. We haven't tested it ourselves, uh, but the tax delinquent list is really good. What's cool is that if you guys have ever used list source, you can kind of slice and dice and come up with a, a list criteria. You can do the same exact thing from within uh, PropStream and the, uh, the data has been really, really good. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, flipempire.com forward slash data. Um, all right. Chico, let me get to the next question here. Uh, let me see. What do we got? Uh, Raphael, what's up, Raphael? Video tutorial. He sent that about 10 minutes ago, so I'm not... Uh, Raphael, if you can do me a favor, if you can clarify the question, video tutorial, as far as what? Well, so, I think maybe, uh, if, you go, if you go to the link that I provided where you can get your two ads, maybe that's what he's referring to. He was asking about the uh, the wh where where is the video tutorial. So the video tutorial and the ads, if you go to... M um, forward slash Chico, you can yep. get access to that there. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Mike, uh, what's up, brother? Will this have a replay? Yeah, just go to my Facebook profile. If we're, if we're not friends, uh, just request me and, and send. Uh, I have a, a long queue of friend requests. I haven't been able to get to everybody. So just send me a message. This will be posted on my YouTube and it'll also be posted on my Facebook profile. And my apologies for anybody that's part of uh, Flip Empire Facebook group or the uh, South Florida Smart Real Estate Investors and Wholesalers. We had a technical glitch for whatever reason. It didn't stream live there. Um, but just connect with us. Connect with me on uh, on Facebook. Uh, make sure you friend request me if we're not friends and you'll be able to watch that there. Or head over to uh, YouTube.com forward slash Alex Pardo and it'll be there uh, today at some point. Uh, all right. Lucas, uh, Chico, you want me to read it or do you just want to go quickly read it for everyone? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, uh, yeah, uh, Lucas has a good question. Are you typically having to show the interior to buyers or are you just selling them based on photos? You know, uh, uh, my answer to that kind of question is uh, price is always a great equalizer, meaning that, you know, if the deal is a skinny deal, then they're going to want to see that deal uh, and, and, and be able to look at it in all the different you know, places that they can in order to make sure it's a deal. If the deal is a really great deal, then they're like, you know, I don't need to see it. Yeah, I'm good, right? So much of that, I think, depends on the deal um, and also depends on your buyer, right? Because if you have a really experienced <clears throat> buyer with a really great deal, they might, they might just say, you know what? I'm good. We're good. I, I don't know what your, what your thoughts are. Yeah. So no, look, I agree with you. The better the deal, the, the less that's going to be a challenge for you, the, the, the tighter the deal the more you want quality pictures, if you can get the seller and or some sort of service to take a video walkthrough of the property, that's even better. Although admittedly, that's kind of challenging to get now. Um, look, uh, bottom line is you want to be buying right. And if you buy right and you get quality pictures and you have you know a fair amount of buyers on your list or at least a handful of really, really good ones, it shouldn't be a challenge to move it. Keep in mind, buyers, we've quickly transitioned from a seller's market to a buyer's market. Buyers have uh, tighten their buy box. So what they were paying 45 days ago, they're probably paying that minus 10 to 20%. At least that's what we're finding here in South Florida. Your market may be a little bit different. Um, so make sure that you're buying right um, and, and sharpening your your tools on the acquisition side because uh, you know buyers are looking for more of a discount. And um, And then look, here's the other thing I have. We haven't done this because I just haven't felt comfortable. I, I don't want my team necessarily going out there, going inside the property. However, if they're comfortable with it and the seller's comfortable with it, say, Hey, listen, just open up the doors. We're going to walk in there. We'll be in and out in three or five minutes. We're not going to touch anything. We'll have a mask. We'll have gloves on. We'll take pictures. We'll be in and out of your life. Uh, I wouldn't say it like that, but you get the point. We're going to be in and out. Some sellers are not going to be comfortable with that, but closed mouths don't get fed. If you're comfortable with it and you know, obviously take safety precautions, wear a mask, wear gloves, don't touch anything. You can be in and out, get some pictures. Alternatively, you're going to have to maybe get them to send you pictures and a video walkthrough. If all else fails, incentivize them with 50 or even a hundred bucks. Uh, a really good friend of mine, Corey recommended that, and that's been working well for him. And, and we recently did that as well. So 
Um, hopefully that answers your question, Lucas. And I was going to say, keep in mind is who you're dealing with on the other side. You're dealing with an owner that is motivated to sell. So they're infinitely, they're going to be, always be more open-minded and flexible than an owner who doesn't have to sell, who's sitting on the sidelines. So, you know, at the end of the day, they also want to move the deal forward. So, um, you know, all you can do is do the best you can and keep on, you know. Uh, yep. I have this saying that I have this saying that there's uh -oh. it makes absolutely no sense. But, uh, you know, how, how do you push, um, you know, I, I would say, how do you push an elephant down the garbage chute? You just keep on rubbing Vaseline on top of it until it goes. <laughs> so See, rubbing Vaseline. And, and, so, and, and just so everybody watching this, that's like the G-rated version of something Chico yeah, might yeah. box me. Oh, like, you know, at, at six something in the morning, that's the G-rated version of it yeah, to give you an idea. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. So we got a couple more questions here, guys. Now's your time. If you have any questions at all for Chico, uh, or even if, if you have any questions for me, fire away. We're happy to answer them. And then Chico, dude, not to put any extra work on you, but in the future, people are going to watch this Facebook Live. If anybody has any questions, maybe you and I can pop in there and answer anything that comes yeah. in at some point in the future. Um, Raphael's got a follow-up. How do you anticipate the market now with the Cobb is slow down? Well, I mean, with the, oh, maybe he these with the, uh, uh, what do you call it, COVID-19? Yeah. Maybe that's what he meant. You know, <sighs> It, this is, it, it's a, whoever tells you, whoever, first of all, whoever tells you that they know what's going on is full of shit because nobody knows. I don't know, bro. No. All you can do is navigate. Okay. And, you know, like any other, you know, like any other trip or any of the destination you want to make is now you've got to be, you know, you, you got to be making adjustments rather quickly. You know, the, at some point, you know, very soon, the economy is going to start opening up. So th there's going to be restrictions. But, you know, even right now, real estate is considered essential. And when the economy, when, it, when things open up, they lift quarantines, even though you got to walk around with a mask and that sort of thing, real estate is, is still going to keep on moving. So now, like, like Pardo said, there definitely is, the market has shifted. So you're going to have to get prices at a lower, you know, get properties at a lower price. The ARVs are not going to be, you're going to have to adjust your ARVs. So the, the way I look at it is the market is definitely going to slow down. And, and that's why it's important for you to be dealing with, again, motivated sellers, doing your best to negotiate mm -hmm. the best prices possible, continually refreshing your buyer's list. Because whatever buyer list you have from six months ago, there's going to be a very small portion of that buyer's list. So now as the market continues over the next couple of months, you've got to go in and try to figure out who are these people that are buying, that are closing on deals, regardless of the marketplace, and replenish that buyer's list. So all you know, to me, I look at it as, it, it definitely is slowing down and you just have to make those adjustments and that's it. You know, it, yep. it you know, there's, there's, there's nothing, nothing else you can do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'll add to that. Look, it's, it's our job guys, everybody on here really appreciate, you know, everybody that has stuck. We're an hour and a half into this, um, as real estate investors, as entrepreneurs, it's, it's our job to adjust. Right. And, um, and we have to adapt to the new market, you know, there there's uh, unplug from the news and, and come up with a plan if you haven't already. And, and by just being on this Facebook live, I mean, that's what you're doing. Right. Um, so you got to adapt. I think it's going to be real interesting in my opinion in the next 15, 30, 45 days to see updated after repaired values. I'm very curious to see sales in late March and in April. And, uh, because right now we're operating, you know, we're, we're tightening up our buy box at 10 to 20%, depending on where the property is. But we're, we're kind of just baking that in without really knowing because we don't have, you know, we don't have data from late March and basically post COVID. So uh, anyways, those are my quick thoughts. Hopefully that helps, Rafael. Uh, we got two or three more, Chico. Are you good on time, man? You got another five minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the one thing I would say is keep in mind is that what we're dealing with, right? If you, let's say, for example, if you are a real estate agent and your market was a luxury high-end market, you know, you're going to have some trouble, Right. We're dealing with a segment. We're dealing with with we're dealing with a segment of the marketplace that their only reason we come in contact with them is because no matter what's happening out there, they want to sell. They need to sell. And then we're dealing with the other side, which is the buyers. And there's a, a there's a combination of the greed and there's a and I say this in the positive way, a combination of the greed and their business model. Mm -hmm. 
they they got to buy properties. It's part of their model. They have they're they're in the that's their whole entire business, and they want to make money. They want to get good deals. So you know, uh, you know, even though even though the market slows down, there's always an opportunity for us. Again, if you were a real estate agent dealing with you know luxury properties in eight you know eight hundred to nine hundred thousand or a million price point here in Miami, you're, you're going to have a tough time because most people that are thinking about moving up are not going to move up. And so that's a, you know so I think we're in a good place from a business model perspective because there's always going to be a need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely agree with you. Uh, let me see here. What do we have, Craig? Uh, Craig's always active on these uh, these so far this week. So really appreciate you, Craig. Is the only marketing that is this the only marketing you do, Chico? Uh, that is the only. I was thinking, I'm trying to see if I had any any of my old postcards here. That's the only marketing uh, that I do. I'm all in on digital marketing, online marketing. Uh, I thought, you know, it's funny because I thought about the other day about like, maybe should I consider, you know, putting together a postcard, uh, a new one or a new version of it. But I'm like, you know, I'm all in on, on digital. So right now, this is the only thing that we're doing. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot. If you do decide to come up with a new postcard, you're going to do so only for the Flip Empire community. Right. How about that? Yes, yes. There you yeah. go. There you go. Um, and, and Craig, just to answer that question. So I know you didn't really ask me, but we do, uh, text message marketing. We do direct mail and, uh, and referrals. Don't sleep on referrals guys. Um, put yourself out there, let people know what you're looking for. Let them know that you're still buying and, um, and just stay when people think about you, they should immediately think real estate or they should think whatever, whatever your target is. That's what they should think of when they think of you. Okay. Um, so just, uh, don't, don't sleep on referrals. Uh, Lucas, appreciate that. Thanks for the love. Uh, very helpful presentation. Last question I have here for you, Chico. Um, I haven't used banded signs. How do you guys feel about banded signs? We talked about that yesterday with Antonio Edwards on the live. Uh, in my experience recently, banded signs have worked great for cash buyers. They haven't worked so well for sellers. Um, that can change as with marketing. Don't go by my opinion, test it. Uh, but here in South Florida, they've worked great for buyers, not so much for sellers. You know, what's interesting with the bandit signs is it might be a good time to put them up because the code violation people are sitting at home and nobody's like the bandit signs is the last thing on their mind. <laughs> so, dude, check check this out, man. So we have a company here locally that goes out and they put it's a company like and they'll live stream on Instagram. Yeah. Them putting out the signs. It's a really reputable company. Um, we've used them to put out signs. And so last week, Adrian reached out to them because we wanted to get 100 bandit signs out. Uh, in in shopping centers, uh, particularly where Publixes and Win Dixies are, yeah, because everything is closed, but people are still going, obviously, to to, yeah. to grocery stores, and um, and they wouldn't do it because of you know everything going on. They just so we haven't found somebody oh, that you know. Okay. Um, yep. So uh, all right, Craig was thinking about adding this to my tool belt. I do SMS and cold calling. Yeah, absolutely, Craig. Uh, I'm telling you. Uh, learn digital marketing and i don't know anybody better to learn it from than chico um so yeah head over grab those two ads at least at the very minimum uh flipempire.com forward slash chico so chico dude i think that should be a wrap right now um i'm sure there'll be some more questions that come in at some point in the future this will also be uh published and released on the flip empire show in the future but uh i'm really enjoying going live and answering questions making it interactive Obviously, we go a lot longer than we typically have been going on the podcast, but uh, I hope and trust that this has been uh, for you guys. As with anything, uh, it's one thing to take the time to learn it. It's another thing to implement it. So um, head over to flipempire.com forward slash Chico and uh, use this stuff because it works. Perfect. Thank you for having me on, Pardo. Wear a black shirt next time, please. Green and so you, got, you guys, yeah. for, for those of you watching this, I went to Chico's house to play poker probably, what, a couple months ago? Yeah. Yeah. So Chico was giving me a grand tour of his new place, which is beautiful, amazing location. And so he takes me into the, you know, him and his, his beautiful wife, Raz, are like showing me around. And so they take me into the closet, this walk-in closet. And all you see, like legit, no BS, all you see, like, a, think of this closet right behind me. The whole thing was stacked with black shirts, <laughs> black right. polos like that and yeah. black button downs. I mean, it was, I'm like, like literally no other color, just black, 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 black. I don't know how you do it, man. Let me tell you, man, the, the, the amazing thing about this is that I, I don't think I could ever go back because every single morning when I get dressed, I never have to think about what I'm going to wear. And, and, and it's the same polo from the same company. 
It's the same black shorts from the same company. I wear the same black socks and I have like a, a drawer full of them. I always wear the same shoes, which is the Adidas. And uh, my life is just so much better like that. And, uh, and it's just amazing. It's, and I even have like, I stock up. So in my closet, it's been hot. So I have these long sleeve shirts. I have a stack of them still in the wrapping, in the wrapper, because they're waiting in the queue. They're waiting in the queue. So when the things get old, I just, I don't even have to go to the store. I just take one from my shelf, put it, take it out. And there you go. So you, you're not like Floyd Mayweather, you know, Floyd Mayweather, he, he has a uh, sneakers, uh, sneakers and underwear. He only wears it one time and then he either throws it away or gives it away. True story. Really? No, no. I, well, that's, uh, that's yeah, that is, but I will take, like, say if I, I have, if I have socks and I want to buy socks, but the, the socks that I have, um, they no longer sell. So I don't want to have mixed match. So I will take my drawers of socks and discard them. Because then I would have a mismatching of socks, and that would make me feel really uncomfortable. <laughs> there you go. By the way, C Craig, look, look at Craig. Craig's wearing a black shirt. I know. You know so, yeah. so I, I think he understands. J Jamal wants to be invited for uh, for poker next time. Yes. So uh, we'll, ha we'll have to make that happen. By the way, guys, last thing before we wrap this up. Once we're past this COVID-19 and the quarantine thing is like over, the Pardos and the Chicos, Chicos are going to get together at Chico's Casa. We're going to barbecue. We're going to, well, maybe we'll do a, a live from your backyard. I think so. I think we're due for that. I think we yes. are due for that. Uh, yes. We are yes. Due for that. Well, so. hey, man, uh, look, I, I we, uh, again, man, I, I genuinely appreciate you and our friendship and uh, we've known each other a long, long time. And, uh, you know, thank you for the support. You've been on the show now four or five times. You were the first interview here, June's. I yeah. don't know, June something of 2016. Yeah. So uh, always appreciate the support and, and you just dropping the, the knowledge and just sharing everything that, uh, you know, all the skills and knowledge you've acquired. So really thank you. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you everybody for coming on. So appreciate it. Yep. Always guys. Uh, listen, really look forward to this. Um, I'm enjoying going live. And then uh, so uh, make sure you guys are subscribed to the flip empire show uh, flip empire.com forward slash podcast. Uh, that way you get notified every Monday and Thursday when a show goes live. And uh, I'll do this as long as you guys want me to. So uh, Kia says, uh, thank you. Look forward to that. Appreciate you, Kia. Um, thank you guys for taking the time. Genuinely appreciate that. And I will connect with you on the next one. Chico, my man. <laughs> Take care, guys. All right.